Colchester Record, the town's audio recording group, celebrated their 10th anniversary at the castle in December 1999. At an evening event, an exhibition was launched by their president, Bill Tucker. Placing my first duty first, I want to start with our thanks to our museum staff who have made this exhibition possible. We appreciate them making local history as its theme, presenting it so efficiently, aided by our diffident, erudite and inspiring secretary and local historian, Andrew Phillips. That's a fiver coming my way in due course. <laughs> and key officers of Colchester Recall already referred to. With our move to this historic building for archival purposes, it is timely here to express our thanks to the Colchester Institute for their cooperation with storage of the past 10 years and as host for our monthly meetings. You will have noticed our tapes are in three centres. We can now cope with two fires at one time, but not three. Now to the subject matter of this occasion. Here in Colchester, and you've heard the statistics, we have one of the largest archives of any town. We continue to interview and record and store what in effect is the talked history of our town and district. We believe history is not about dead past, but is a continuous process, and we do our bit mapping that process. We know that today is tomorrow's history. Today is influenced by the facts, descriptions, emotions, and indeed the prejudices of the past. It is a pity that our organisation did not exist way back in history. We could have interviewed Cleopatra's handmaid and had an eyewitness description of just how long was her Greek nose. In the 11th century, we could have interviewed Eudo Dabifer and queried his concern of building his Norman castle over Roman, Roman temple ruins. A face to face with the Elizabethan Dr. Gilbert, possibly augmented by a hospital TV video coverage, might have elicited what he envisaged might develop from this experiment with electromagnetism, which he had recently demonstrated to the Virgin Queen. It might be interesting to know the beginning of the beginning. Hospital Radio frequently interviewed people for its programmes. Sparse funding meant a tape, once used, was wiped clear and reused. Ken Cheeseman and myself were recording the opening of the Hospital Radio Moot Hall Fair by Granny Paxman. I remarked that we ought to keep that recording of a famous old lady, but the tape, like the others, was cleaned. I brought up the idea of keeping some of the interviewed interview tapes in a sort of sound archives for the hospital radio and hospital radio agreed to the proposition and developed this tape souvenir section as sound archives and then the library was approached to store them not always with total success unfortunately the first ever interviews under the sound archive system saw three experimenters Christine Bennett of hospital radio Paul Diggins and myself interviewing the man who drove the last steam train out of Colchester. The library via staff working with suggested characters to interview, i.e. the harbour master and our harbour trade and the last street lamplighter and others. The oldest interview was a tape by Harvey Benham of a cod fisherman who remembered back into the last century. Our recordings included international and national notabilities because of the unique town event, the Oyster Feast. Politics and show business were all there and captured when the feast was covered. The main incentive then was for the talking newspaper. There are those in this town who for many years have filmed our local events and changing architecture and street scenes. There are those who record on tape accounts of people and the events they recall. Some people collect old photographs. Some collect old street scene postcards with or without trams. There are old artworks of the town, museum publications. There are those who write about Colchester and there's always that prolific publisher of local history, our local newspapers. So we plan an annual recording Colchester conference to be held here in the castle and involving the university. The date is April the 8th, all day. The target to make Colchester not only the oldest recorded town in Britain, 
but the best recorded. I want to take this opportunity of making a presentation uh, to, uh, from one of our auxiliaries, I'm talking about hospital television now, of the Millennium Tape. And um, it's got various uh, sections of the past few years and it winds up uh, this century and uh, I suppose gives a jumping off ground for the next which will be uh, covered by hospital television uh, in the coming months. But it's a, a little <coughs> thank you um, from the uh, hospital television and from ourselves for coming along and uh, making this superb opening of a superb Thanks a lot, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> um, in my contribution that when I became a, a cub reporter on the old Essex County Stand in 1963, for just the three years I was there, Bill was the chief reporter and he is one of those for whom I should always be grateful for all his help and training and guidance in those very formative years and he's played a great part in setting me up hopefully to be a good journalist and then that was the foundations on which I then went into public life. Thank you very much.